All right. Welcome to Zero Waste Youth in Action. In this session, we'll hear about how from beach cleanups to college campuses, youth are emerging as leaders of the zero waste movement and, and really have been for years. My name is Jeremy Drake. I'm a certified zero waste associate and instructor with Zero Waste USA. And I'm a Missoula, Montana based zero waste consultant working cross country, mostly with my colleagues at Zero Waste Associates. The two speakers in this session, Freddie Coronado and Young Gurguras, will offer their experiences in the zero waste movement and the ways youth are advancing it. Um, you've seen how we've been doing it in other sessions. It'll be the same here. We're gonna have presentations and after that, uh, we'll do a little Q and A. Feel free to put any questions in the chat as we go. Um, and we're going to start with some brief introductions. So um, since 2014, Freddie Coronado, uses he, him pronouns, has been an advisor and organizer with Zero Waste Youth USA, a volunteer-run organization based out of the San Francisco Bay Area that connects students and young professionals passionate for the zero waste and climate action movements. Freddie also works for the San Francisco Department of the Environment as a residential zero waste specialist. Young Gurguras, who uses they, them pronouns, has worked with the Post Landfill Action Network plan since graduating from the University of Pittsburgh in 2019. While on campus, they organized the fossil fuel divestment campaign and worked for the Student Office of Sustainability. Young's involvement with the People Over Petro Co. and the fight to resist the petrochemical expansion of the Ohio River Valley led to their crossover from climate change, the climate change movement to the zero waste movement. So I'm going to stop my share now and invite Freddie to share his slides and to kick us off. And to unmute. Hi, everyone. My name is Freddie Coronado. All good. Thank you, Jeremy, for the introduction. And I'm really excited to be co-presenting with Young, as PLAN is one of our great allies to Zero Waste Youth. Oh. So I'll go ahead and just get started. Zero Waste Youth USA started in uh, 2014 out of the San Francisco Bay Area. I've been involved with the organization since uh, then when I was an intern at the Department of the Environment. And our mission is pretty simple, is to empower students and young professionals to lead their communities to a zero waste future. So a brief history of zero waste youth. Um, it actually started in Brazil in 2011 and has now evolved to become an international organization. And Zero Waste Youth is currently has uh, seven different chapters in Brazil, Costa Rica, Italy, Mozambique, Nepal, Portugal, Philippines, and the USA. Um, our chapter is one of the most active along that of Portugal and Brazil. And this chapter was actually formed as a result of the annual um, recycling update, which is an event held by the Northern California Recycling Association. So the Northern California Recycling uh, NCRA is also our physical sponsor, although we get sponsorships from a lot of different uh, local municipalities and haulers. And yeah, our, our organization is completely volunteer based. So Zero Waste Youth um, started as a one-time event. So since 2014, we've held annual Zero Waste Youth Convergence. So we bring together young people that are interested or passionate for Zero Waste or that might want to learn what Zero Waste is. So we give the opportunity for young people to present to their peers and over the course of the past nine years since we've been active, we've probably had thousands of students uh, and young professionals attend the Zero Waste Youth Convergence. During this Zero Waste Youth Convergence, uh, like I mentioned, we allow and encourage participants and students to present their projects 
So we have anywhere from beeswax workshops to um, having high school students present on their youth climate activism movements in their own schools. So what we're really doing is empowering students to become those leaders and uh, giving them a platform to present. And when the pandemic hit in uh, 2020, that did not stop us. Our Zero Waste Youth Convergence was slated for March 16th. And by March 12th, uh, the Bay Area basically announced that we were in a lockdown and we still held on with our event. Um, but of course we had to do it virtual. So for the past two years, that convergence has been virtual and it's been actually pretty great um, to have uh, students and young professionals be able to attend from all over the, the US. And although we, <clears throat> excuse me, although we, uh, you know, are for zero waste and empower those, we also have started to branch out and be inclusive of other movements. So on our latest convergence, which was in October of this year, uh, we had an indigenous traditional ecological knowledge panel. So more and more, we know that young people, you know, it's an intersectional movement <clears throat> and we need to be uh, inclusive of all other movements. So we're also allowing a platform to different important youth movements to, uh, to present during our convergence. And we now are starting to do more events uh, beyond the Zero Waste Youth Convergence. We've also hosted documentary screenings and we really like to collaborate with our sponsors so this is um, an event that happened in 2019 and it was uh, the story of plastic and we co-hosted it with, I believe it was UC Berkeley, Upstream and uh, the Ecology Center. And more often than not, we also have been doing a lot of beach cleanups. Uh, Bonnie, who's in the uh, uh, in the audience, is one of our really active members, planning committee members, and so she's been like leading beach cleanup efforts. And this has been great to like, you know, get our hands dirty and like teach younger people about you know why it's important to beach cleanups. So we are looking forward to do more of those. And where are our zero waste uh, alumni at? So like I mentioned, these events have allowed young people to develop their leadership skills, presentation skills, but also like giving them the opportunity to network with other young people. So I'm sharing here, you know, different former planning members and what their career fields are now. So we have folks, alumni that are now in doing, um, environmental lobbying. A lot of our former members now work for uh, different public agencies and haulers. So we really are paving the path for young people to enter the field because often it's pretty hard to, to enter the field. So this organization really is uh, like a stepping stone for people to get a foot into zero waste. And with that, I will end my presentation. Um, we are looking for different uh, partnerships and projects. So our next Zero Waste Youth Convergence is probably happening of October 2022. So if you have any ideas to, you know, to present, if you are uh, an attendee that maybe lives in other parts of the country, let's do a, a virtual event. Follow us on social media. Um, here is our email and below is my personal email. So please do uh, reach out to us. Thank you, Freddie. Yeah, I don't know if there's any questions or we can wait after Yang uh, does their presentation. Yeah, let's, let's uh, wait until the end here. But uh, if you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat. I definitely have a couple. So um, yeah, take it away, Young. Looks good. Uh, you'll have to unmute though. All right. Hi everyone. My name is Young. Um, as 
um, Jeremy said, I use they them pronouns and I work for PLAN, which stands for the Post Landfill Action Network. I have our little handle there, and that is a pic of our virtual team um, with our pets slash plans, plants. Oh my God, I said plans. Um, so um, we advise college and university students on creating zero waste initiatives on their campus. And we do that in a couple different ways. Um, so we have um, advising one-on-one -on -one with students, which is like going through a call um, and talking through the issues that they might be coming up with when they're running a project on their campus, such as um, composting or um, a move out program. Um, and then we also host events. So we have our annual conference, just like um, Zero Waste Youth does. Um, and we do a campus pledge where schools can sign on to commit to eliminating plastic on their campus. And we also do consulting um, for the administrative side of um, campuses. Um, and we're here now, but we actually started um, by a group of college students um, who graduated and had made the first um, self-sustaining move out program at the University of New Hampshire. So you can see that we've grown a lot since then and we do a lot more than just a move out program, which is, um, if you're not familiar with the move out program, um, it's like collecting gently used goods from students when they leave college and selling it to students when they, to the new students when they come back. Um, this is our theory of change and I wanted to, I always try to ground folks in this um, when I do presentations. So. This is called the point of intervention theory, and um, it's no one can do everything, but everybody can do something, and together we can fix this broken system. So when we work with um, youth, often they feel very overwhelmed with the state of the world. They've never lived in a world without climate change, and um, it, can, it can feel like debilitating to have to do everything. So using this as a guide for them can really help them understand that like they do not they can't do everything right like they can do one thing and together we can all work on this this is the poster that we created um that models the point of intervention theory and um in this photo you can see that the red is the linear consumption economy so it's what we currently um, operate in in our capitalist world. So extraction, production, distribution, consumption, and disposal. And then all of the blue with the little people on it is the ways in which people are intervening. Um, so we have resist, redesign, repair, reuse, recover, reclaim, renew, um, rot, that one's fun. Um, but basically that's um, like we, we tell students and like you too, you can be anyone on here, right? Like you do not have to be doing all of this and the person who's redesigning the way we um, use takeout containers is no more important than the person that that's resisting the pipeline. We need both of them um, in order to fix our broken system. We do this at college campuses for a couple of reasons. So we see it as kind of a more pliable version of um, the world. They also often have a lot of resources that we're able to take um, advantage of in a way that um, allows them to model a solution that isn't as scalable um, right now, but can be modeled in a way that makes it scalable in the future. Um, so yeah, it's like testing the grounds for new ideas and they can extend beyond campus and universities can often um, provide resources to the community in a positive way instead of in the usual like negative way that a campus can kind of suck on the community. We try to make it more beneficial and make it in a way where the university can be a mutual beneficial relationship to the community. What I work on specifically is our plastics campaign. So it's our plan to make schools plastic free. We do this in the way of a pledge. It is four steps. Um, we made this in response to, we call it the summer of straws. Um, in 2018, a lot of people were banning straws and considering their schools plastic free, but we all know that it goes way beyond the plastic straw. Um, and focusing on the plastic straw is, is ableist. So we have this four steps um, that essentially are what we see as necessary to be plastic free on your campus. Um, and there's like huge explanations for each one of these, but um, you can look at that on our website. Um, but there's reasons why it's not just like ban single use plastic. This is like a process that we, it, it takes time. 
And to get started, you can just look at our Plastic Free Campus manual. So this is free and we made it with a bunch of partners, um, many of which are probably here. Um, the link to it is, is in this presentation, which we're gonna drop to. Um, and you can just look at that. And um, I'd say the next step after that is to make a meeting with me if you wanna make your school plastic free. Now we can take questions. Terrific. Thanks, Young. Thanks, Freddie. Um, uh, I'm going to start with a question, and I encourage you all to pop some questions in the chat. Um, as a, someone who um, no longer identifies as a youth, how can I help support these movements? Um, in particular, the organizations that you both work with. Freddie or Young, either. Yeah, I'll go ahead and get started. I, I think what, what I forgot to mention in the presentation is the importance for, you know, the, the generation that's, at least we're experiencing here in the Bay Area, a lot of people are retiring and, you know, those jobs are becoming available. So in order to pass the baton, right, if the zero waste movement wants to survive, um, you need to like be advising youth. Um, so I think that's really important for, you know, older folks, like even of myself, you know, uh, to like be an answer to someone that needs it. So that could be either by being an advisory board or, um, yeah, just doing direct one-on-one -on -one meetings. If there's someone, uh, someone young that has questions about what career path should I take, I think providing that advising role is like really important and necessary right now. Yeah, that that mentorship piece I think is is huge in helping bring people along and also creating you know the space to know that. You know, not approaching it as an ageist thing, right? Where we're like, "Oh, we're the we're the zero waste experts. Let us show you the ropes." But um, you know, there's definitely a, it's a two, I see it as a two way street that kind of mentorship relationship. Young, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I think just like emphasizing the way Freddie is like saying, like really making space for people that aren't there right now, right? Like if you've been in your position for a while it's it's time to like lift up a youth so that they can be learning that position and um bringing in new ideas and i also wanted to answer um the denise's questions how many campuses have a campaign um so i didn't mention how many campuses we work with um in like any capacity so that goes from like a small call or like an email exchange to like weekly calls we work with 390 campuses um, I personally on plastics work with 100 campuses and we've had 20 of them commit to eliminating plastic. Uh, what does that commitment look like in terms of where are they along the process? Yeah, most of them commit to five, like, in, so in our, in our pledge, which you can see, I dropped the link. Um, you have a date for completion. Most of them have around five years down the line as their date for completion. Um, and a lot of the work that I do is like organizing the students so that they hold the campus to that deadline. Um, because like those deadlines are common, right? I think that like the UC system was going to be zero waste by 2020 and that's not. Um, but like the, the lofty goals are there for students to, to use as a tool, right? Like it's, that's what you use to make sure that they're going to follow through. Yeah, hold the whole accountability, huge accountability is such a huge piece of this uh, zero waste journey. Um, we got a question here from Oregon, Morgan DeWeese. What about work with high school students? Do you see more progress involvement with college students versus high school students and or campuses? Freddie or Young? Um. I, I think they're both very different demographics um, with us, like high school students, you know, they're really eager to like learn and to like have a platform to speak. 
at the same time, like they're just so overwhelmed with extracurricular activities or just like their, you know, classwork. Um, and then college students, you know, I think they're looking into a possible career path. So they sometimes might already have like some sort of like understanding of the concepts, but maybe they're like, well, I don't know if I want to do this or that. So I think both are super important to be involved. And, and for us, like we've tend to get more college students and, and, and like young professionals involved, like recent graduates. But um, I really think that, you know, we need to start working with, with high school youth more. Young, have you ever um, worked with high school age youth? Yeah, I've taken like the occasional one-off call with a college student or I mean, a new high school student um, to um, like mentor them, but it's a different environment than it is for colleges. Like plan uses like colleges as our, as our like vector for change for a specific reason. And um, it's different than high schools, right? Like you pay to go to a college in the US, which is shitty, but it gives you power there um, because you have the, the capital, right? Um, so I've, I've like talked to students, but usually we will send them to another organization, one of our partners um, who can help more with like organizing in a university or in a high school setting. Do you see um, any of the tools from plan being scalable to a high school setting? I think some of it, right? Like the movement building stuff can definitely be um, replicated over, but the structural things of like the way universities are broken up into departments that basically act in silos, which is similar to, you know, like how boroughs act in different ways or departments of a borough um, is very different than a high school where you're all under one building at some times. Um, so I think that there's certain aspects can, that can be replicated. Um, and I'd say like still, if you, the first like 18 pages of all of our manuals, including the plastic free one is just like basic tips for organizing um, when you're a youth. And those are like always applicable, like self care, building your team, making sure you're taking care of your team. That type of stuff is, is kind of universal. Definitely. I'm going to switch up the way that um, things look for us right now. I'm going to remove the spotlights on our speakers here. And I invite you all to click the gallery um, view button up in the top right hand corner so we can kind of all see ourselves. And um, I see that um, Kelly has a question. If you want to just pop on your video, Kelly, and ask it yourself, you're welcome to do that. We have about five more minutes and we can kind of get a little more interactive with it. Um, folks, I, I invite you to turn on your video if you like. All right. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, my, my question, I work for the Forest Service and, and we deal with public lands and I run a sustainable operations program. So uh, my recreation folks tell me that they spend a lot of money and time emptying dumpsters in our, you know, camping corridors, you know, even with distributed uh, campsites and and so this, the trash, a lot of that trash is throw away from the American idea of camping with, you know, bags of chips and hot dogs and all sorts of things that come in plastic. That's all filling the dumpsters in our outdoor spaces, right, in public lands. Do you see um, zero waste youth maybe um, being able to partner in generating some ideas to change our our framework, or, you know, our cultural framework around camping in these spaces so that zero waste is part of how we design our experience from the beginning. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. yeah. So one of the ways, right, is like we, we work with Candlestick Point National, is it a National State Park, sorry, it's a state park. And uh, it is just like, it's actually a dumping ground for, for San Francisco. So like through our work, you know, we've been able to like, we're literally doing hands on work helping park rangers um, like clean up the beach, the beaches around there. And so I definitely 
you know, I, and we've had like great partnerships with our park rangers, uh, thanks to Bonnie that's like out here too. Um, so I think like any state park or national park can develop some sort of like program where, you know, maybe once a month there's a dedicated like cleanup in a certain area and you like work with the surrounding high schools. That's like one point of intervention. The other one I would say is promoting more like a zero waste youth picnic styles of like, like we've also done zero waste youth picnics where like we ask like youth to bring their food in reusable containers. And we mostly do it that uh, as a way to like educate uh, or to show like young people that it's possible to have, you know, to be in a park and like have a zero waste like picnic and not like be, so hopefully they can rec replicate that but I also think like access, you know, like when I think of like equity, um, often more than not, like a lot of the, you know, most marginalized community members might not have access to like zero waste systems or don't even know what, you know, what it applies. So I think it's, you know, we all have to put in our part. Um, but I think Kelly, like if there's a way to do partnerships with the schools that are around you, like with environmental class, like, hey, like we have, you know, this is an area prone to litter or dumping, like start some sort of like little cleanup and that will like get like young people to start, you know, thinking and hopefully implementing like more, more zero waste programs. So. Thanks, Freddie. Um, I see a question. Jessica, did, did you have your question answered or do you want to turn on your camera and um, ask it? Hi, yeah. Um, I think Young kind of gave me a great resource and I'm looking through it right now. Um, but yeah, I think working with college students and with young professionals, I feel like a lot of us are really burnt out. And I think Young even alluded to this earlier, you know, thinking about having lived with climate change our entire lives, as well as maybe going to school or working in a pandemic, feeling really isolated. I'm, I'm just curious if there's anything that either of y'all have to add about uh, kind of working through that and still like staying connected with each other. I get this question all the time. Um, <laughs> as you can imagine, um, cause I'm also a young person still, even though my name is also young. Um, so for, for the burnout side of things and like the hopelessness that a lot of youth feel, I like to turn to Adrienne Marie Brown. Um, so she, Adrienne Marie Brown is an author, um, and they wrote, um, pleasure activism, emergent strategy. There's like a whole series of stuff there. And they hold a conference that I was listening to in which um, something that really stuck out for me is like, it's okay to feel hopeless about this. Like it is hopeless. We can acknowledge that and like grieve about it. Um, but it doesn't mean you can't go down fighting. So like, that's kind of how I see where I, what, what I'm doing, right? Like I can go down fighting and that's okay. Like there's joy in, in the fighting of it. Um, and so a lot of the work that I do with students is telling them to take breaks, right? Like you burning yourself out is like the worst thing that you can do for the movement. Um, like any one event that you hold or manual that you create is not gonna be as valuable to the movement as you are as an individual. So like the self, like the taking care of yourself, the like not looking at your laptop for a week, like not organizing for a little bit, like that is the best thing that you can do. Wonderful. Thank you, Young. Those are those are golden words you're speaking. Thank you, Freddie and Young and everyone who joined us for this session. I want to invite you back to the main stage for the next plenary um, on reuse systems. I put the link in the chat over there. So you just copy that one, end this session, and get back into Zoom on the other side. Thanks again. See you over there.